welcome you all to Irma today for this particular workshop that we are having. Strengthening of Farmer Collectives. It's a national workshop on FPOs. So for some of us, uh, you know, in the FPO space, this word has become a buzzword in the last five years or so. Before 2011, 2012, it was relatively unknown. But today, the word FPO is seen, uh, is a very popular word. It is seen almost as the key institution for doubling farm income for, you know, pooling resources in the new contract act. Almost on anything and everything, FPO word comes up quite often. So this workshop has, uh, you know, two particular kinds of objectives. And we've chosen two aspects of discussion this time. The first is on institution building. <clears throat> the other part of it is uh, the issue of policy. And the essential idea of trying to have this discussion here is many of the partners are in Maharashtra, Karnataka and other parts in Andhra Pradesh as well. Why is it that we cannot get some of the learning? Earlier Pradhan had learning on FPOs. How do we actually make this part of a national pool of ideas and innovations? And that's the role which we feel as uh, IRMA, as a knowledge institution, we would like to play that role. We're really looking forward to discuss today on, on this very important issue topic of how to promote, how to strengthen FPOs. So, first of all, um, GIZ um, is, is a government-owned institution, let's say, and we are implementing government-to-government -government projects. This means, for example, also not to talk only about success stories. Yeah? I mean, there are nice success stories like Amul or Kanataka, Sahaja or Organic from a user company, but there are also a lot of failures, but even more than success stories, and I feel, or we feel, that we should also highlight these failures and, and learn from that. So this is a trainer's uh, uh, guide. So it's meant for uh, the uh, uh, for use by uh, uh, trainers, mainly from uh, NGOs and also uh, FPO promoting uh, organizations. So, uh, uh, like uh, Yona mentioned, that the focus is not uh, so much on content or technical information, but rather on the facilitation uh, methods. So, in terms of uh, what uh, uh, storytelling methods or group exercises or even outdoor activities can be used by uh, uh, trainers to uh, facilitate these uh, uh, learning sessions for the uh, participants. We talked about it that the knowledge exists out there and the efforts need to be made to aggregate that and to make that useful. So, the manual or the annotated bibliography are steps in that direction. So the purpose and the rationale behind coming up with uh, this bibliography was that the knowledge exists out there, we need to synthesize, we need to analyze some of that and bring it out as an open source, uh, you know, knowledge resource for academic research as well as for uh, use of practitioners. Ema had developed its own viewpoint, which is actually shared by the entire faculty group because all of us work together on uh, answering that central question, what makes farmer organizations click? The quality of education, the quality of promotion activity, or promotion process that we bring to bear in creating an activity, and the level of intelligence. We are uh, focusing more on uh, farmer's happiness index because uh, Average in India now FQO has grown more than 8% dividend and average share holding is around 1000 rupees. End of the day 80 rupees per annum will never excite a farmer. Even two cups of tea will take 80 rupees. So what exactly excites, what works is the ease of doing agriculture. He is getting quality inputs at his doorstep. He is getting a uh, reasonable price for his produce at his farm gate. He is getting timely technical support in his cultivation practices. He is getting into organic, he is getting into new cultivars. So these are all the uh, areas where he gets excited. And we are developing a 10 point farmer's happiness index, which is patronage linked. And then we are trying to gauge how he is uh, able to uh, center around this activities are able to get centered around this. Uh, this price volatility is the, is the major problem which 
FPO phases when they deal with output marketing. So how the hedging can take place or modern type of market can be brought in. Challenges is uh, when we are working with the government, uh, uh, especially FMOs which are promoted by government project, that's the target. We want to complete uh, planning within uh, one day or two days. So, irrespective of what is the learning from that uh, training, that is one of the test. Finding the open for uh, commerce, so that thirty percent deleted can be removed, and you can look at the positive. Can we look at the design elements a bit more critically, based on the literature review that uh, Irma has done, based on the capacity building modules and the experiences that we have, so that we get this whole design right? So those who are doing the design changes, they don't need capacity building input from us. Think the investments. When it's been uh, allocated, and how I think the, the vision should be there for the any of the investors coming in or the facilitating organization taking it up. Otherwise, the credibility of the organization is responsible for a task like this. Uh, uh, Great thing that you're doing by working with the uh, smallholder farmer. The whole thing is about uh, valuation. The whole thing is about economies of scale. The whole thing is about uh, you know moving up the value chain. So, uh, 27 FPOs showed an increase in revenue. 16 FPOs showed an increase in profit. Uh, mature and recent FPOs tended to perform better. In fact, that certified is similar to organic. Means it's not 100% organic. It's 90%. We have also tried credit rating, but you can't really call it credit rating because it is not mainly based on finances. This credit, uh, credit bro, that we offer, you know, we do a participation of 50% where we can be up to 50% loss. And in our experience till now, we haven't seen guarantee being invoked by any of the, for any of the uh, <coughs> So it's a very good sign. I think somewhere in the FPC, actually, except the notable organization, Members' equity is really, really poor, even after 5-7 years, and not building in this kind of a TDS system, tax deduction or members' uh, equity contribution deduction as source as transaction. So, bankers have one role to play, but I think strengthening member savings also has another role to play. No one is willing to give to So There is a fundamental problem in the business proposition that banks look at FPOs. And we have to solve that. One is this JNG route and the sum of this route and you can capitalize that is one route. The other route which we have been in articulating, but you are giving KCC. Bulk it up. So KCC you are in a link to land. There are in a share brokers, women farmers, not linked. At least for them, you are not allow it to be aggregated in FPO. So, so one is a primary FPO and the other is a secondary FPO. The secondary FPOs are basically, basically the commodity specific as per the requirement, it is not a because I recently I saw another guideline which is uh, you know in this circle somebody is trying to push that guideline the new new uh, policy guidelines uh, somebody has prepared and now that is also in this circle that is proposing that a three tier FPO system exactly like PAC system uh, in the country completely ignoring that there is a natural commodity cluster and the secondary or tertiary institution of the FPO should happen based on the need not necessarily just you know you like to put them together so there is there is a second tier of third tier so we are saying that so primary FPOs are of course we have to have them and then secondary FPOs the, the, the aggregation would be on the basis of commodity cluster commodity value chain and they will be of course, will be also multi-service.